Hi everyone! I'm Catherine and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part two of a series I've created on how I made this 18th century dressing gown. I started from a Janet Arnold pattern, actually a couple different Janet Arnold patterns which I combined together. And that's in my part one where I draft the pattern and make the mock-up. And in this video, I'll be showing you how I sewed this final version of the garment using this English rose color of linen and the pitfalls I had along the way and showing you, talking to you about my experience in the end of the video. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so here are all my pattern pieces laid out on the table. The pink linen is the main outer layers and then I used muslin for both interfacing and sleeve lining. And so I'm just sewing my preliminary seams on the bodices. There's actually two bodices because there's the outer layer and then the inner lining, which are both made of the same material. Here's a shoulder seam. And here is one of the waist ties that I'm just sewing with right sides together. And so here are some of my partly finished bodice pieces. So I'm just going to be sewing up that center back seam now. And there are my waist ties all sewn and so I'm just trimming down that seam allowance so they're ready to be turned right side out. And I'm using this fancy tool, which comes in so handy for stuff like this. I think it would be impossible without a tool like this. I think it's just called a tube turning tool, but I'm not sure. And there it is when it's all pressed. Here's the center back seam all pressed open. And that's what it looks like from the outside. And here are my collar pieces sewn and I'm just I was going to pin them together, but then I remembered I had to um, hand stitch the interfacing onto this piece simply because it wouldn't be caught in the uh, seam. It was a little too short to be caught in that seam. And it looks like I'm just stitching in the ditch here to hold the interfacing. And so here's my bodice with one of the pieces of interfacing pinned on for extra reinforcement. And so I'm just using a hair bone stitch to connect that. And that's what the collar looks like when it's been sewn. So I'm just trimming down the seam allowances on that so it can be turned and pressed. And that's what it looks like. Now here's a sleeve. So the pattern for this sleeve indicated that the sleeve should be sewn to the cuff. And then the lining is just made up of one layer, which is mounted to it afterwards. So at first I was going to sew it all together, but then I realized that I should sew the lining separately from the outer layer and then connect them later to hide that seam. So now I'm just stitching in the ditch to connect those two. And that's what it looks like on the inside. And so the sleeve pattern calls for a uh, decorative pleat to be put in. And so I just pin that in and I'm hand stitching it down so that the stitches are semi-invisible from the outside. And I've just basted that lining to the main layer you can see along the sleeve head. And so I've folded down the edge of the sleeve to finish it. And I'm just hand stitching that down so that I catch only the lining in the stitches and they won't show through to the right side. And so I've attached one of the sleeves to the bodice and I decided to use some nice cartridge pleats and I'll show you how I did that on the other sleeve now. So I'm just pinning it in 
along the part that's not gathered. And then this is the part of the sleeve that's going to be gathered. So I'm adding two rows of gathering stitches and those rows are lined up so that the stitches are in the same areas as each other, as you can see. So the needle goes in and out at the same exact points on both lines of stitches and that will help create a nice crisp cartridge pleat. And so I'm just pulling on those threads to pull in the cartridge pleats. And now this is how you sew cartridge pleats. You have to do it by hand and you have to catch each single pleat with one stitch and connect it to the other layer. And in that way you don't squish the pleats. And that's what makes cartridge pleats unique from regular pleats is that they're not flattened. And so for the rest of the sleeve seam, I just went ahead and also stitched that by hand using a back stitch. And that's what that seam looks like. And that's what it looks like from the right side. And so I'm just trimming down that seam allowance. And also, I also added a strip of twill tape along the center back seam because the pattern for this bodice actually came from a jacket and it called for boning to be used there. So I just substituted the twill tape. And now this is the collar just being pinned onto the neckline of one of the bodices. And there it's now been sewn. So I've attached the lining to the outer bodice. And I, of course, sandwiched the collar in between that seam. And so to finish off the sleeve seam, I'm just folding down the lining to hide that seam allowance and hand stitching it down. And again, I only caught the lining in those stitches. Now here is the skirt panel. I've already sewn a side seam into it. And you can see there's quite a bit of fabric that I used in this. I just used all the residual fabric to create a nice full skirt. And so this is the center front seam, which I've pinned partway up and there's about maybe 10 inches or so left open. Maybe a little less than 10 inches, maybe six inches. And so I pressed that open to finish it and I'm just hand stitching it down. And so that's the nice finished interior sleeve seam. And now here's the bottom. And I made a little mistake when I was sewing the lining to the outer layer. I forgot that I needed to sandwich in those waist ties at the very bottom. So I'm just opening that seam just an inch or so to be able to fit that waist tie in. And I just hand stitched it in so that my stitches wouldn't be too visible. Now here is the skirt and I've added the same type of gathering stitches as I did to the sleeve head. So for cartridge pleats, where the stitches are all lined up with each other. And so I'm just beginning to pin that on. I've just pinned the landmarks. So the center front and the center back, and then I'm gonna be pulling up on the gathering stitches as I pin the rest in. And then I just hand stitch that onto the bodice using the same method as before with one stitch through each pleat. And this did take a while because some of those pleats were kind of hiding and I had to pull them out. But this was part of the fun. This was part of creating the cartridge pleats was finicking around and finding each one and stitching it to the bodice. And as you can imagine, it took quite a while and I really tried to do it all in one sitting because I was afraid that if I left it on the table, my kids would pull out all my gathering stitches. But there it is when it's all done. It was definitely rewarding to do the cartridge pleats. Very, very pretty in the end. And now there's the inside, which still has the raw seam allowance, as you can see. So I decided that I would repeat the exact same process on the inside. I first trimmed down the seam allowance 
and then I folded up the bottom of the lining and I hand stitched it to the skirt in exactly the same way as I did to, with the front, with one stitch through each pleat. And this time it was a little bit quicker than doing the front because the pleats were now fully in place. So I just had to stitch through each one. And that's what it looks like when it's done. I just love the look of cartridge pleats. And finally, I have the hem to do. As you can see, the hem was left uneven. I decided to have it a little shorter in the front and longer in the back. And that was actually mostly because that was the shape of fabric that I had left to make the skirt out of. So I went with it. And I'm just hand stitching that down. Okay, everyone. So I'm back with my finished dressing gown. And I'm so, so happy with how it turned out. And let me tell you, it actually was an emotional roller coaster of how I felt about this garment towards the end of the making. Because, I mean, obviously I'm hormonal and everything, but I was also pushing myself to finish this really fast, especially with all these cartridge pleats, because the, the cartridge plating was something I felt like I had to just do all in one go because I was afraid to like leave it sitting that anyone who would touch it would just mess up all the pleats and then I'd have to regather it all. <laughs> so I pushed myself to finish all the pleats in one sitting and then I tried it on and burst into tears <laughs> at how the garment looked and how it looked on the way I'm looking right now at the moment and all that. But after I hung it up in my closet and kind of forgot about it for the evening and then tried it on the next day, I actually just really, really loved it. And uh, the thing I love the most about it is just how luxurious it feels because there's so much fabric. Like the skirt, as you know, has so much fabric gathered up and the sleeves and the bodice are all fully lined and it creates kind of a weighted blanket effect. Like you guys have heard of those weighted blankets that help with insomnia and anxiety. I've never used one of those, but I imagine that this is kind of the same effect. When I put it on, it's just like, oh, like this heavy, luxurious garment. And it's exactly perfect for what I want to be using it for. I'm going, I made this dressing gown to wear after my baby is born, when I'm resting and relaxing, because it's so nice to have something nice to wear, even when you're resting, where you still feel put together, but you're resting and it's a nice, just comfy garment. So I'm happy with how it turned out. The only thing I'm a little unsure about is the, the sleeves. Um, I decided to change it from how I did it in the mock-up where I actually have most of the gathering taking place at the back, which because I like the look of all the pleats in the back, but I'm not sure how it looks with the poofiness being in the back as well, but whatever, I'm really proud of myself for figuring out how to mishmash these patterns together because the sleeves were from one pattern, one Janet Arnold pattern, and the bodice was from a different pattern. So it was kind of hard to figure out how to put it together. And I'm really proud of myself and I like how this turned out. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video and this series of videos, please give them a like, leave your comments or questions below. Check out my accompanying blog posts, which will be linked in the description and Subscribe to my channel if you enjoy history bounding content and sewing content. Okay guys, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.